Hey guys, I'm Liam Smith with Agent Smith Voice Productions. The B-29 Superfortress. Instantly recognizable as the aircraft that dropped the atomic bombs, Little Boy on Hiroshima, Fat Man on Nagasaki, and the incendiary bombing campaign on Tokyo. Built by Boeing and based on the highly successful platform of the B-17 bomber, it was to be the largest operational aircraft that flew during the Second World War with a combination of cutting-edge tech and devastating firepower. In today's video, I discuss some brief combat history and the computer turret system of the most technologically advanced piston engine bomber of World War II. According to historian Eric Larrabee, the B-29 was the greatest gamble of the war, costing over $3 billion. The first B-29 prototype, known originally as XB-29, rolled off the assembly line on September the 21st, 1942. It would take two more years before the aircraft was ready for combat, as it was hampered by severe mechanical issues, the biggest of which were the engines. One example was that they had a tendency to catch fire. The Americans were able to resolve this problem with the Pratt and Whitby R4360 Wasp Major engine, but it arrived too late in World War II. By April 1944, the first operational B-29 of the newly formed 20th Air Force touched down in India. In May, 130 aircraft were operational and on the 5th of June, the B-29 flew its first ever combat mission, with 77 out of 98 aircraft taking off from India to bomb the Makassan railway yards in Bangkok and Thailand. 14 aborted the mission due to overheated engines, and the remainder arrived to find the target obscured by bad weather. On the way back, 42 planes were forced to divert to other airfields due to low fuel, while five B-29s crashed on landing. In the first ever operational mission, none of the aircraft were lost to enemy fire. Throughout the course of the Pacific Theater, the B-29 proved to be a devastating weapon. On the 9th and 10th of March, 1945, the aircraft took part in the terrifying firebombing of Tokyo. Finally, on August the 6th, 1945, the B-29 Enola Gay dropped the world's first atomic bomb, Little Boy, on Hiroshima. Three days later, a second B-29, Bakskar, dropped another atomic bomb, Fat Man, on Nagasaki. Shortly thereafter, Japan surrendered. After the war, the B-29 was adapted for several functions, which included weather reconnaissance and rescue duty. The B-29 saw military service again in Korea between 1950 and 1953, battling new adversaries, jet fighters, and electronic weapons. The last B-29 in squadron use retired from service in September 1960. Perhaps one of the most famous copies of this aircraft was the Soviet Tu-4, which made its first public appearance on August the 3rd, 1947. With a wingspan nearly as wide as a football field, a tail fin as tall as a three-story building, a distinctive greenhouse glass-style cockpit, and a metallic fuselage, the B-29 appeared futuristic and sleek. Powered by four air-cooled Wright R3350 duplex cyclone engines, it had a range of 5,800 miles and a bomb load 
of 10 tons. In addition to a pressurized cabin and tricycle landing gear, the B-29 was equipped with a state-of-the-art computer-controlled remote fire system that operated five machine gun turrets. In 1944, the evolution of the electronic computer was in its infancy. Most computers of the time were designed to break Nazi war codes. A single computer would encompass an entire room. Fortunately, the Super Fortress was such a massive aircraft that ample space was available for a new high-tech computing system. Unlike the B-17 and other bombers, gunners in the B-29 Super Fortress were no longer required to physically operate the heavy machine guns that sat in openings in the fuselage or dangling from turret balls at the bottom or the tail of the plane. With the pressurized cabin, the crew weren't exposed to the cold, thin air encountered at very high altitudes. Instead, the weapons could now be aimed optically by a special targeting system that was controlled by analog electrical instruments via a fire control officer and one gunner. In the remote system, the gunner simply aimed the sight directly and the turret was driven electrically to follow the sight position signal. Throughout the aircraft were five sighting stations, one in the nose and tail, and three in the center fuselage. Each sighting station was equipped with separate computers dedicated to each gunner's sight, thereby increasing the weapon's accuracy by compensating for airspeed, temperature, humidity, gravity, and even the lead in aim needed to pinpoint an enemy target. It was the revolutionary General Electric Central Fire Control System that directed the five remotely controlled turrets, which were armed with two 50 caliber heavy Browning M2 machine guns. What I find very fascinating was how advanced this analog computer was when operating the turrets. Logic was built into the system so that fire was interrupted if the turrets were ever pointed at parts of the plane. To further limit gunner access to these turrets, the system was able to automatically reload in the event the ammunition became jammed. Whilst this computerized turret mechanism was revolutionary for piston engine aircraft, the introduction of the high-speed jets by Nazi Germany quickly rendered such systems obsolete. Next time in my war videos, the V2 rocket. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. I really enjoy making these videos. And don't forget to give this a like and to subscribe for more content. You can also help support my channel by subscribing to my Patreon or donating to my PayPal. The links are in the description box down below. Finally, to my loyal subscribers, your contribution and ongoing support for this channel has been so helpful, it really means the world to me. Liam Smith with Agent Smith Voice Productions. Until then, stay tuned. I'll see you next time.